Well, hello everybody. How, how many of you here are gardeners? Oh gosh, a lot of you. I thought today we had a garden museum event yesterday and they were all very serious, not only gardeners, but they'd been to hear Pete many times. How many of you have heard Pete talk before? Okay, good, not that many of you. So we won't be, we won't be going over too much of the same territory, but um, we will touch on the art element in the sense that Derslade is patronage of a type, it's more of a collaboration but it's an art piece that is very different to any concrete form of installation or art because of its complexity. What a lot of people who aren't gardeners don't understand about this sort of multiple disciplines of ecology, mm -hmm. creativity, science, nature, all these things, weather patterns, seasons. It's the complexity of a garden is so... Um, so multi-layered and uh, hopefully we'll explore some of that today with Pete looking looking at the work through the prism of his work here and and elsewhere so we'll start with uh, Pete what what is this what you found when you first came here I was not flying so high but I this is what I <laughs> <laughs> but this is what we found what I found when I was invited to come for the first time uh, to see the site and, and, and the possibility to work on that. Uh, I think it's three years ago now or already. Only so. three years ago. This, this was a, a very interesting first open mic session with the local community where I think there were about eight inches of rain on this one, one visit. And it did give an indication of the mud that was to follow, didn't it? It was, a, it was an interesting session. So who are you? Who's, who's yeah. here? He was standing with, with uh, I think, uh, one of the architects from Louis Laplace's office, uh, Michael, and uh, of course, Ivan and uh, Manuela, and, and other people, just uh, uh, Louis himself, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were looking at the site, possibilities, uh, sort of, uh, what, is this the right area? But there was a long, uh, this is how, if, how I found it. They have found it earlier than me, but... I've met this situation before at a garden of John Cook, where he bought an old farmhouse from the family. I had this concrete, I had everything, and uh, he said, can you cut me a few borders in this concrete so that we can just... Uh, I said, how are we going to do that, John? He said, just, yeah, well, maybe there are machines nowadays, we can just... I said, John, I can only do things if we start all over, because this is not, you know, this is too much. So here I saw this. But I had confidence. You know yes. why? Well, yes, why? The people that asked me to do something here. Yes. So that gave me yes. so much confidence to, that I could just say, they already said we take it out, <laughs> we're going to rebuild the farmhouses. So it was not a question of that I had to, uh, that there was a suggestion of leaving this all as a mess. But, uh, so there was a lot of potential, and I, I thought, yeah, I can do something and here. And the precedent of Berry Court as well, which had been, which was established at that stage, which is John Cook's garden. Yeah. I wonder, had uh, did you take Ivan and Manuela to see Berry Court? Did they see it? Or? No, I think no. they're so busy, and I think they. Yeah. <laughs> I think Lucky every they're here ev today. Ev I, not at that moment. I didn't know, you know, no, no, exactly yes. how busy they were, but I think I. It's worth, uh, we met to another occasion, and, and I think that is, I just came here. There was no, no question of bringing them to other mm -hmm. guys. They went to my book and say, yes. we like your work. Yeah, huh? but it's very interesting because yeah. a lot of Pete's collaborations and work yeah. with, he's very particular about who he'll work for. You would just, you're very good at turning down clients on the basis of a gut instinct, I think, aren't you? Remember I never one, one story we won't go into in your no, no, where, no, no, no. Where, where Pete wasn't s s left left the site first site visit. Is that true? <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to say who. I'm not going to say who. Is that a surprise? So, no, okay. no, no, no. You know. I know. <laughs> oh, oh, not here. Oh, oh. Yeah. So, so you see all the work involved, and you see this is the situation you were in all the time. There was a very heavy rainy season and you see Adam Hunt, uh, Adam Hunt from uh, the, 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 the local landscape architects who carried out all the work here. So it's me, me sitting in my office in Hummelo communicating with Adam and his crew and the partners and uh, the contractors and they were really, when they called me and I was, 
I didn't understand, you know, how wet it was. I just say, carry on, carry on, just make it happen. They didn't send you this image to say, do you, was this about no, a, I took a the year image. ago? I took you the took, you I then took came the image, over. Yeah. So yeah. was this only about a year ago? A year ago. Yeah, yeah so yeah. The, you've all been and seen around the garden. Look at the transformation. Last fall. It was last fall. Yeah. Yes, the power of perennials. <coughs> And see, this now, is yeah, the cloister see, garden. Lot, lot of, uh, so did you, in the cloister garden, did you have to dig out a lot and for the replanting? For those big brucinettias, they must no, be... No, yeah, yeah, I didn't. Uh, you know, I just have, have the idea and I, I think other people have to think how to carry it out. That okay. Is the, so right. that is mainly... Fantastic. Which, <laughs> no, it's not to. fantastic. That is how it goes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think that's... In all the things, you know, you're an architect and you have to find out a lot of things before and that uh, other people have to think about how are we going to make that. Yes. But you see, the, uh, the, the starting point was just to keep it simple. So uh, talking about all the farmhouses, they, uh, every time I came, there was so much work done on the buildings that I thought, oh, I, I, I got a better and better idea of, of what it could become. But a very good starting, best, uh, one of the starting points was we had to keep it simple in the farmyard. We wanted to keep it as a farmyard so that trucks could come in and out and that things could happen there without destroying the sort of yes. garden that it could have. So we kept it simple. We kept the entrance more as a sort of plant, uh, sort of little planting area. Mm. The rest is just a lawn, a turf, and a, a with rubble underneath. So there's a very thin layer of, of soil on top of the rubble. Yes. So everything grows there, sort of half wild, and is mowed. And interestingly, everyone waiting for the talk today, that'll be happening more and more. It's actually quite a good meeting place. Sort of sense of yeah, sense so it's of space hard for, uh, for for someone who's uh, uh, let's say an architect or a designer to create something nothing. Yes. Uh, to create nothing somewhere. So they, this is the space I created. So it's just lawn. Uh. So, but uh, then we uh, uh, have this courtyard uh, called the. Let's from the beginning it was called the cloister. The cloister garden was. I don't know. Uh, Louis is here, so I don't want to just tell how how it was all thought about, but it was just to, like in a cloister, you had this, uh, how do you say, alleys or yes. this gangways, uh, that you look to the, the, the combs into a garden, and I was <coughs> thinking of something simple, uh, so, and also a place where people could cross from one uh, area to another area, so it, uh, it had to be very uh, sort of... Uh, and uh, very particular to your work as well is that there's a sort of shortage of straight lines. There's, you know, it's, it's very fluid. No, I, so I, I work very geometrically You do work too, very yeah. geometrically, but yeah. here at Dursleigh you've worked in a yeah, it's, quite it's, it's, rhythmic it's, it's, it, it, That happens uh, you know, in, the, in, the in, in the conversation with, with, <coughs> with uh, the, yeah, the people involved, the client and also the architect. <coughs> You come to a conclusion. We should make it not, you know, not too yeah. formal uh, and, and keep it loose, and then then that's the the starting point. And this is how it worked out. Yeah, it's beautiful. So that's here we, with it all. <coughs> Did you have to bring in lots of soil, or was it all no, pretty I okay? Think, uh, You've got. I, I have no idea, but there was a lot yeah. of soil. Uh, <laughs> ah, okay. Let, I won't ask any more technical. But what, Two Half thousand tons. Two and a half thousand tons. Two and a half thousand tons. Yes, that's ah, the answer yeah, to that yeah. question. Yeah. Now this is fascinating, <laughs> Pete. So what's the um, because each of the beds has got a a shape. It's sort of slightly mounded. No, is there a reason? Uh, more or less the master that? or the master plan or the footprint of the car. Uh, let's say that how how we shaped it so that we created a number of beds where people could walk through to experience the garden or the planting from all directions create uh, different perspectives because if you do a huge perennial planting with no paths you lose a lot of the, the sort of uh, perspectives a lot of the depth of planting so I always have a sort of uh, a size of width of bed <coughs> that you can just reach with your eyes mm -hmm. and that's more or less uh, how I design so you also creating paths create more uh, uh, more uh, experience mm. so you have more you can walk through the garden. You think you can be there for an hour, and you uh, and uh, never if, get the same view. Twice. No, if you create two double borders on the sides and you walk up and down, do you already? And so this is mm. going in and out, and then it's uh, more immersive. 
Yeah, yeah it comes more, uh, it works more onto your mm. mind. Yeah. Yes, and interestingly, the, the contouring of the beds as well, so that you've got a slight yeah, the contouring is that in February when the plants die, die, have died, yeah. you know, that's just, and we mow it back. So in February, then if you make the beds flat, then you have a, a sort of sloping landscape with no, uh, yeah, sort of Form no depth. Uh, so yeah. when you contour it, then it, it's still a landscape. Uh, so we have these little contours which uh, go up till 40 centimeters in the middle and so up and down all over the area, and then you create something that is still a sort of uh, landscape. Yes. This is a crunch day of just... Ch so you can see how much goes into this. It's not a question of... The, the, to get the fluidity and the immersive sense of Pete's different plantings, it's a sort of very complicated. And this mm -hmm. is just one element of it, the perennials. It doesn't show the bulbs and... Yeah, and this the, is uh, more or less... You see, this is... Beginning just planted, so from a cherry picker, which you, you can see the, the, the design. And what we do with the planting is that we transfer all the planting as they are on the, on the, on the, so we make a grid on the plant, a grid in the garden, so a grid of ropes, and then we really transfer the planting as it is on the drawing on the ground. And then we just, uh, and then it is there. So it's more preparation, but it's, uh, you can just have it exactly as it is on the plan. And that's a very satisfying image for the gardeners to go back to and see. It's yeah. sort of already. What's the, tell us your And we already thought. have slugs in the garden, you see that? <laughs> <laughs> so now, I, now, are you talk, calling those Louise Bourgeois slugs? No, slugs. Uh, snails. Snails, <laughs> yes, not slugs. Big difference. So, Pete, what's, uh, what was your thought of the central... Um, Area. I have no oh. idea. You have no idea. <laughs> it just, just came, just it came up. It came yeah. up. Well, we'll see the plan yeah. and we'll see how it came up, hopefully. So, from planting in which month? Last I think last we autumn? planted. No, no. They planted. When did we plant? May. Yeah, and so this is, March, May. This is six weeks ago. Yeah. So it's staggering, isn't it? This mm. is amazing, That's what delicious do. mixture. These are Heather Edwards' pictures, aren't they? Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. So you see, it, it, it's amazing what plants can do to, to your mind or whatever, even in a picture. It has a lot of depth and, 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 and it changes so quickly. So uh, what you see now is, is but come back in a month time, it's completely different. Yeah, and it's wonderful. But yeah. that takes your plant knowledge to have understand, and we'll yeah. again look at the complexity on the plans when we have a look through. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just extraordinary. The ponds, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and what was the um, thought process, or was there none behind <laughs> the uh, <laughs> behind the mounds of of yeah. grass? I think uh, I thought we miss a f few mounds. You thought, yes. I think we need, uh, I think that the whole sort of meandering middle part need, needed some interaction with, with, and I thought no plants, just green. And I think the green relates to the reverse or relates to, uh, when you look, when you stand at the end of the garden, you will see that it relates to the landscape in the, in the behind near the dovecote yes. and so. So you see the green dots jumping into, over the, over, over, over this sort of complex of houses into Fantastic. the back landscape. Yes. That's, well, and also beautiful in winter. Yeah, that's this a detail. This is a huh? plant you love using. Which, which, which yeah. echinacea is this for pallida, the gardeners? Pallida, yeah. pallida. Pallida, echinacea pallida, looking divine. It's a North American native. It's a very simple plant, but uh, it, it sometimes uh, when you show it for the first time, people think the plant is ill. <laughs> huh? Because it, it's not perfect. <coughs> I think uh, that uh, happens a lot with plants that are wild. They not always look like they, you want them in your garden, but it, it's a beautiful wild plant that is long lived, long, longer lived than most echinaceas, and uh, it fits in my idea. Uh, and interestingly, these particular pictures we're looking at are highlighting the 
flowering perennials, but what proportion of grasses do you think you've got in the in the scheme the, here? Yeah, no, yeah, people think it's 100% what I use on grasses <laughs> because they always talk about our olive and its garden grasses. <laughs> but I think it's maybe 30%, 35 30. And then in the but, middle But I can turn section. it around, I can make it 65% yeah. and 30% of perennials. Mm. It de depends on the concept. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. This yeah. is this amazing. Have you all been around the wonderful exhibition yeah. of um, Pete's plans, which mm -hmm. actually, f for me, they really um, highlight this element of the art versus is, is gardening art, which you're very interesting about. You're ambivalent about it. I don't think that, per definition, art and, uh, gardening is not a an art. No, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, something you like. It's like everyone is, so many people are painting in the week weekend or on holidays, they take a little palette with them and paint, but they don't necessarily are artists, you know, that is something different. Yes. So, and everyone is gardening, so why should every be, everyone be an artist then? Yes. And why should gardening be an art, you know, if you just like gardening? Yes. Uh, I, I don't see gardening, uh, it could be art, but you know, you have to, in the right hands, yes. as art is. It's, it's not complicated. For me, yeah. it's not complicated. I was, uh, there was a big discussion a few months, a month ago, I think, Noel Kingsbury and other people were involved in that discussion about is, uh, is gardening an art? I, mm. I found it was a seamless uh, discussion. Yes. Uh, because it, it depends on what, what is made. Huh? So Pete's just doing what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> However, I like that gardening. Looks quite art with a capital A for me. Um, and actually I teased Peter about this yesterday because I also think it would be very good to you know, have this on the bottom of my Nike trainers. Don't you think that looks like the most yeah. perfect, <laughs> perfect Nike trainer? And very, the complexity of this, I mean it's, and yet what we're seeing here, is this the final coloured plan that you presented? This is the final plan, plan yeah. That, uh, even the numbers per group are on it. You can see this, uh, you can't really see it, but I see that uh, there's number, every group has a number of plants that we place, set in place and uh, put in place and that's, so this is the final plan for the contractor to put out a number of plants per group. And it's um, interesting, you haven't coloured in the outside planting, is that because it's a non-perennial uh, or? No, the outside, uh, unless in the middle piece is, a, we call it a field or a meadow, because the height of the plants is, is sort of in between, uh, you can look over and, and feel being in a meadow. So it's, uh, it's not a meadow, but the height is that of an unmowed meadow. On the side, the outward beds have a height of two and a half meters, three meters. Mm -hmm. So they are robust and bigger, fuller perennials. And make you feel even more enclosed. Yeah, when that, the, that is when that is what I meant. That is yeah. why I, I, I mm. did this. Also, we have put the, num the names of the plants in this black and white, and I didn't do that in the middle. And if you put the names in it and color it, then it might be sort of mess messing up okay. the reading of the plan, because you can see if you look good, there's a, a sort of the pond and a. And a uh, a sort of wet meadow in the front of the pond because the water runs from the top to the bottom and collects there more or less or that's the most wet place then we have this first piece which is a block planting the middle piece which is a matrix planting I can explain everything afterwards if you want to and then we have a sort of block planting again and block planting is easy to keep as it is because you can always go to back to the original plan and say, oh, this group is this big and that, that has that size, is this particular plant. Then the middle piece, we call it a matrix planting, where uh, that is where one plant is dominating the whole area and where little groups or individual plants emerge from. So that feels more uh, natural, mm -hmm. naturalistic. It's completely different, it's designed, but it feels more like wild. It's not wild, wild at all. It needs more knowledge. So uh, well, there's a wonderful book in probably here, your book you did with Noel, which yeah, describes. Yeah. If the you want to buy it, we have sold enough already. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no but harm if, in uh, uh, We are going to order more if you like. But uh, in fact, I, I don't. I, you know, 
In a horticultural sense, it is harder to manage because it, it the is, block yeah. is yeah, need like to, a blueprint and you can it's follow It's like a blueprint. Yeah. And yeah. the other things you have to interpret, that you have to just uh, need to know more about your plants. Uh, some plants will probably disappear or some plants will seed around. So it is more natural and we let it evolve easy, easier. And I think you can just uh, edit what and goes wrong. In terms of your dialogue with Mark, the head gardener here, do you think he, you and he will be discussing that from the Maybe, the I, I think yeah. yes, we do. And I, starting this, I will never know what gardener will be involved. So I have to be very, I depend on what, who, yeah, who is hired, you know, yes. to do the garden. So, uh, and my, all my work depends on gardeners, uh, 100%. Without gardeners, uh, you yeah. lose this uh, within a few years. So, I'm always careful. So, that's why the block planting is involved, but also the trial in the middle, the surprise in the middle of this sort of more natural planting. Mm -hmm. It gives, yeah, uh, it gives a lot of opportunities on one way because it is more exciting at, at, uh, when you're in the middle of it. I think a lot of people underestimate as well th this um, collaboration that you have to have. It's not just a collaboration with your client, but it is pr predominantly a collaboration with the gardening team. Yeah. And it can go wrong so quickly. So you know, and it's, everyone knows all about it. it. <laughs> and it can go wrong within a, a year. year. Mm -hmm. It just tears. You saw how quickly it took from eight May planting to now to be looking yeah. like it is. It can go in the reverse. Way. So it is. The it's, um, it's the same thing. Yeah. And this is, this is the outline of um, the cloister, cloister. Mm -hmm. and a very different feeling here with again, but a beautiful yeah, plant. I think the outside is the gravel. You see, the gravel is mixed up with the plants. Yes. But, uh, it's more the idea, so I think it, it is, <laughs> And again, then this very clever, just a few little dots of thing with this predominantly lovely green and black. You've got the, you go in and it's so calming and then suddenly you'll notice that there's a Galenia trifoliata sort of coming out of the yeah. ground. Yeah, so uh, all the gardens I do need to work for, for all seasons. So they need to work in the spring, in the winter, in the, uh, in the spring, summer. I mix them up nowadays. Mm -hmm. Spring and well, winter. Well, they're equally no. important yeah. in your okay. work. No, but that's true. So, uh, also from from for the for the meadow garden, we made a bulb plan, a very intensive, very rich bulb plan, that will be installed. So, uh, when you come here in, in March or February, it already is just uh, will lure you in uh, because it, it we have. Uh, layers of wealth from crocus, uh, uh, species tulips, to alliums, to eremuras. So, oh, this is nice, huh? This is great. <laughs> Look, this, isn't this wonderful to see the sort of work in progress of how, uh, yeah, how, yeah. This, how this works with, um, I must say, Anya, do you give um, Pete lots of uh, felt-tip yeah. pens for Christmas? <laughs> I should think he runs through his felt-tip pens quite quickly. Oh, yeah, for his birthday, I got felt pens and uh, for my, I was it married was 40 years, I got 25 felt pens, <laughs> 40 lucky, mil. <laughs> lucky you Pete. But it is, it's wonderful because also this shows us, uh, gives us an idea of how you work, you know, the, the importance of the colour, that you're thinking on so many levels in terms of the seasons, the colour, mm. tall, short, time. spring, summer, Next time. Next year, yeah. year after. Yeah. And but the colors are not related to the color of the plants. That no. is true. The color is not the colors of you see are not related to the plant color. So. A little bit. No. A little bit. Lithrum blush in pink. Roma in. Yeah, yeah but yeah. you yeah, but you run out of color. I think. Right? So. Uh, yeah. I think yeah, but I think subconsciously there yeah, is. Yeah, Look. That, yeah that yeah, is yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Yes, grass is in green. But this is wonderful actually because it also shows people how you work in this <laughs> layering. This is. Um, Presumably, is this your um, drawing board in Humalo? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Just, uh, and um, the layers, so layers of tracing paper. It's like a um, couturier building up his uh, hands. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, I see. Oh, yes, it's, uh, it looks very cha chaotic in a way, don't you? Yes, yeah, but it's yeah. great. Well, as the, yeah. the planting, you want it to be chaotic and not static. Yeah. These keys. 
which I think look like suddenly Liechtenstein's come into the studio, don't you? The way that they've been put up here. Um, I hope that's going to be a travelling show. So we've looked at Derslade, and now we're going to come back. Are, are many of you local to here? No. Yes. So do you, how many people recognise this scene? Maybe not. Actually, they, it's a bit of a trick question because they've got their backs to us. But uh, so, Pete, when did you first come to this area? This area, I think I came to England with my bicycle and my children uh, in the back of the bicycle, or on the back of the bicycle in the, in the 70s. Yeah. And this was when I just started our nursery in Hummelo, that we traveled a lot to nurseries and people. We learned to know a lot of uh, plants. I had a a partner in the beginning of a nursery who was a head gardener at Dixter and we had no money so the only place to go to was to Dixter for a holiday so that was uh, <laughs> that was that one was of the good things formative and then we we met all these people that you know uh, people in gardening from Berchetto to to you know whatever Christopher Lloyd and uh, uh, even your husband we met you know. yes yeah. And 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 our great friends here. So yeah. this is Nori this and is po, Nori Absolutely. Pope, yeah. and and John Cook. John Cook had a nursery. They had an estate Fabulous. as well. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and this, uh, they became friends. Yeah. So a lot of Pete's early work was through friendship and connection and the people yeah. you met and talking about people knew me and knew me almost only about my plants and nursery. They they never had the idea that I was designing gardens while in in. The Netherlands, they knew that I was making gardens. They thought, oh, here's that, uh, you know, this plantsman that, uh, you know, we, we, we can talk plants plant. with. Yeah. Yes, so there was a lot of plant talk. This is lovely. Only plant this talk. Is, this only plant talk, only yes. Plant and talk. quite a lot of cheese, too. And wine, huh? Cheese and wine. <laughs> cheese, wine and plants. And this is lovely Hadsburn, yeah. which we all spent so much fabulous time in. Uh, with Nori yeah. and Sandra, and this is all your, Keith your Wiley, colleagues, yeah. Keith Wiley down in down in Devon, and, yeah, and, uh, and friends of uh, Rosie Atkins and uh, mm. uh, Wild yeah. Side isn't open to the public very often, but yeah. it's a wondrous garden that um, it's closing this year. Is it? I think, uh, it that's you I can mean. go by appointment. I think really? if you write yeah. to Keith Wiley, and I, I, he, can, uh, he this is a very fascinating guy because he was mm. working uh, day and night to create a garden on his own, on himself, and I have this, um, admire his. Sorry, his Tenacity folk. Oh, he, folk, I could yeah. do that. I, I already yes. when I met him was tired already. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, you yes. saw that was, and this was on our trips. You see me. Uh, no one will recognize the guy in the background. That was uh, Alan Bloom in the 70s. Or oh, this was in the 80s when we just traveled to England to collect plants for our nursery, just to get, create new varieties. Uh, we were in the middle uh, center of the plant world because mm -hmm. we lived near the German border. So we traveled a lot to Germany. We collected, we, we learned to know all the growers there, but also in England and we become became a sort of trading place for new plants. Yes, and a meeting place. And a meeting place for a lot of people in the gardening world. Yeah. And here you see, uh, we, uh, Alan Bloom is looking uh, at me when I dig out a plant in his, uh, uh, in his show garden. Place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Nyphophias, by the looks of things. This looks like yeah. Little Maid, which he, he was one of yeah, his that early was, crosses. Yeah, it's it's true. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I've forgotten about Little Maid. Uh, ah, yeah. David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> David Bowie <laughs> has... No, I was just, uh, you know, you see how hard I worked, you know. You <laughs> so I was, I was cutting, uh, taking... Were they giving you pillowcases? Are those pillowcases? For seeds, yeah. We were collecting seeds. I was ah. with a seed, seed trader, a trader well, there. Anya, were you having to buy block Block so you cases. see, and that's uh, Sahin, up. a big seed trader from the Netherlands, and we were digging, uh, they, they, he was obsessive at, obsessed by plants as well. I was healthy obsessed, he was obsessed. <laughs> and, uh, and what are you now? I'm still healthy, Inter I'm very borderline, interested. Uh, for borderline, borderline no, obsessive. Borderline, uh, so we met people, this is John Cook, um, Dan Pearson in his first, uh, first garden. At home farm, Anya. look at Dan. Uh -huh. So we yes. all changed a little bit. Jamie <laughs> Compton, uh, Nori Sander Pope. Sandra. That was our first introducing our uh, book in, in, in Sweden. Uh, so, okay, that was the good years. They were yeah. the good years. Always a glass in hand. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I didn't want to put a picture in and just I oh. asked someone, can you 
Oh, Photoshop it out. <laughs> <laughs> I put a plant in place of the class. <laughs> and meeting Noel. Noel That's Noel, Noel Kingsbury, who yes. did a talk here a few weeks ago. You see, a Cowley had a, he had a commission for a planting there. So we met him. Uh, Urs Walzer in Germany, one of the research centers for, for they were, um, all his work was based on uh, Richard Hansen, and that was about plant habitats and communities. I didn't believe in that because it was so strict. There was no real escape in what they said you had to do. So, but I learned to know them, and it's very interesting that you can real, uh, really work with communities of plants um, and make a, a garden that looks good. So that is, uh, that is, yeah, that was yeah. an eye-opener for me, that I, I experimented a lot, but if this is a community that could be real, I think I can do gardens that are different than the English gardens or yes. the decorative gardens. And like that was one of my big yeah. ex, uh, sort of inspirations. Mm. Um, you were a bridge in between these two Yeah, but also uh, I was, we had this group of people that was called perennial, uh, it was a, a group of people in Europe that were uh, I wrote a book in the 90s, it's a story on itself, but we were, I had a friend who came from the wild side, from wild plants, I had another friend who had a garden open to the public, it was so wild that, that I said, how can you garden here? I said, I love it, I said, but he also loved our plants, so he was bringing in, Henk Gerritsen is the name, mm -hmm. He brought in cultivated plant in his wild garden, and I tried to escape from the English, more traditional garden where, where, uh, where it all was about decoration, about beautiful plants, and if something didn't look good, you had to change it. And so I found it too easy, to be honest. I thought if gardening is this, that you, when you don't like a plant, or a plant is uh, out of... Uh, uh, like changing uh, furniture around. Yeah, like changing furniture. That is what, uh, and there were so many rules you had to, uh, you know, the death had your roses. You had to take out, out your seed heads and think, yeah, that is not, you know, I felt a little bit sort of. It was too, yeah, too straight jacketed. Yeah, too, yeah. So that's, we tried to escape. So we had all these discussions, night and days, also with John Cook and with other mm. people from Holland. How can I escape it? So I, I started to, to throw spontaneously some like seeds in the, in, you know, in the border, see what come up and can we leave it and how will it look? So we had this big experiment. And then we had, um, um, our nursery was also a, a place where we had plants that no, no, not many people had seen. Hmm. You can go to the next one too, yeah. was that German? So what we had, we had a, a, the, the, the Free University of Amsterdam, uh, they collected all the seed lists from all over the world, from, from Siberia to Japan, and we got the seed list and we could choose from that. So we did all the trials of seeds of plants we thought that might be interesting enough for mm -hmm. gardens. So designing I didn't do at that time anymore because I had no time, there was so much to do. But we wanted to try our plants to see what they could do. And we had through all the seed lists, we, uh, we, uh, we did thousands and thousands of seeds mm -hmm. trials but we picked out a number of uh, uh, genuses or sanguisorba, yes. philipendula, and other uh, phronicastrum that were not known in gardens or, or eupatorium. Mm. And we found species that were suitable for gardens and, uh, and never used. Yeah. Also plants that were underestimated as good garden plants because everyone was looking at alpine and, and, and short plants, and we were looking for tall plants that could uh, make impact in gardens. So that was the whole And very story. interesting as well, because it shows that you weren't just designing, you were actually creating your pigment, as, uh, in, palette. Um, in your palette, and or if you were a chef, you're inventing new ingredients. So you're, so many years of your work at Humalo with Anya running the nursery and trialing was actually mm -hmm. You know the yeah. seedbed of what you went on to be able to do. Yeah, so I have played things. a big role at that time because yeah. she, she ran the nursery when we uh, and, and I could do more or less just not free will, but I could do yeah. more all the work around it. And she was took care of all the people, uh, all, all the social uh, things, and yes. we had open days for many years since. I can tell you that in 18, in, 18, in 1983, <laughs> I'm not that old. But, uh, <laughs> How many people were? No, we had the first list? open days, and you know who was guy who was walking around with with with, with uh, the visitors, 
Christopher Lloyd. Christo. He was yes. showing around. No one yeah. knew him. Yeah. So that was the beginning of our, our that people started yes. to know each other. Uh, when us. he started writing about him as yeah. well in Country Life. So we met a lot of famous nursery men in Germany. This is Ernst Pagels, the one who f invented the new Miscantus. So in fact, a from, very the, important from the first tall Miscantus, uh, I'm digging out uh, Hallebores in Yugoslavia in the, in before the war uh, came out. We, we visited meadows just to get an idea of, uh, we, we discovered a lot of meadow plants were good garden plants, although they, and that's why pl plantings look more wild. Uh, my fruit, are you going fast? Huh? I am going fast because I've realized we're, we've out been of, talking Run out of time. We yeah. haven't run out of time, but we've okay. got, we haven't started on the High Line yet, so we yeah, are, we're so, going to have to whiz yeah. a little bit. You're but, on, yeah, it's okay. okay. Just, if everyone doesn't mind. What was the subject? The subject now yeah. is about you traveling. <laughs> okay. Traveling. Yeah, this was. Traveling. Uh, yeah. You're okay. German, your meadows, yeah. you're starting to go to America. So the American. No, that was, had to do with my first uh, commissions in America. They, they just. Um, let's say my first commission in America was uh, by an email, uh, a fax, they call it uh, at that time. <laughs> By, by the battery in uh, New York uh, and after 9 11. No, the Lurie Garden. The Lurie I think Garden. I, there was, an, a, yes. a, um, there was a, a competition, uh, an American for the Millennium Park, and I, um, they wrote me, a, wrote as a fax if I wanted to uh, be part of the competition. So there were 11 people chosen for the competition. John Brooks was in it. I think uh, there were uh, 10 people. And I know, I, I, I looked at the list, I think a competition in Chicago, what can I do? It was about one and a half acre of sort of uh, part of the Millennium Park. But most important was that it was about plants and that people would come there for the plants instead of the sort of the, the, the sort of hard landscaping. But I look on the list, I saw John Brook, okay, I can beat him. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we're on film. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> no, I'm joking. But uh, no, just, <laughs> yes. if he sees the film, he knows that I'm joking I because know. he's I unbeatable. Know. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's a lot of people that yeah. that I thought. And then I saw, oh, Captain Christensen, I can't beat her. I, and I saw two people I couldn't beat. So they called me a few days later. Said, Pete, did you decide whether you wanted to do this competition or not? I said. It was at Ulyor, uh, he was the, the, the one who wrote out this uh, completion. I said, uh, Mr. Ulyor, I say, I've looked at the list. I say, I, I, I say um, <coughs> if I look to the list, I see that there's two people I can't beat. That's why I don't do, uh, take part in this competition. But if it is about planting, I can beat them all. He <coughs> said, he said, why don't you team up with one of the people you can't beat and then you and make the corner? And that, that's how we won the competition. Yeah, fantastic. So, so uh, yeah. And then, then that took you to America. Took me to America. You. A lot of people I learned to know, Rick Dark. Um, most, um, and, and it's strange though, that most people I learned to know were uh, ecologists, botanists, uh, yes. people not in the design world. They, they were so strict on their design that they, did, and they didn't know anything about plants, and my life is more about plants than, yeah. than uh, anything else. And, um, Oops, there's John Brooks. John Brooks. <laughs> we are going to whiz through, because actually maybe we should go to the High Line now and, and talk, talk about the High Line. Uh, we'll look at Homolo for a bit. Don't go too fast. No, because I, I won't. Will, uh, I listen, I'm sorry, if anyone's got to leave, we won't be offended if you have to leave early, but I ho are you happy for us to roll yeah. time-wise? Okay, so you we won't you feel pressurised you know, uh, by you time. You skip 10 okay. years in one Okay, in one, in all one right, well, listen, so long as I have it on good authority that we can <laughs> overrun, are you all happy we overrun? Yes. Okay, well then we'll slow down. Okay, okay. now a little okay. bit. Yeah, this okay. is how, how we started our nursery. You see the trial beds. So we trialed all the plants from seed from, from collecting in our bed. And you see there's quite a number of plants, little groups and big groups. It was in the front of our garden. This was in the early 80s. Yeah. Uh, we trialed all the new miscantus. So you see that, uh, and you see the Jew heads is uh, nothing in the background. Gosh, that's This was the early hedges. 80s, that's uh, amazing. Uh, strong winters. This means trial garden. So all the plants you see, you probably recognize now, but no one recognized them 
in the 80s because they were they come from no nothing. One they was, came from no heaven. No one was growing those. Yeah. Yes. So we started. Uh, uh, so we had a, a flood in the summer, so all the garden was underwater. So we lost all all our trial gardens. Yeah. So we brought up brought in soil, and then we thought we are going to create some borders and some formal formality in the garden just to give people a chance to look at combinations of plants we have uh, we had uh, collected and these amazing that, that hedges. Was, uh, so this was later when we had a second flood and we lost uh, uh, or no this was not after a flood this was when i was working in america and i suddenly realized that our garden is very old-fashioned i do other things already for so many years we should mm. uh, change our garden so we changed our garden in more and uh, more uh, more perennials mm. And this is how it was, uh, um, yeah, late, late the, the years 2000. Yes. This is in when you still had those hedges. They've, they've it's winter, since gone, yeah. but it's lovely to look back on this. As the hedges an old are work, gone now. The it? hedges yes. we took out. But they were so um, influential. That that view. Yeah, this is and our this nursery, is our office. Fantastic. So and nursery uh, still. Not at that time it was. Okay, yeah, yeah. that time it but was. We, and we, what have we you done there now? Nothing. Uh, no. Just planting. So we just we stopped. Planting. So the, this is. Yeah, we did a new trial. So what we did was, uh, uh, we moved the nursery out because it was too much work, too much, too ex intensive. So we did a trial of robust plants that could compete with any other with any weed, and then we planted this sort of selection of plants, forty different species or selections. Yes. And seeded a native mix into this planting and see how long the aesthetics will stay. So how long can we do that with very little maintenance? This is yeah. maybe two days maintenance in a year, yeah. except mowing. And then how long can we let it look good? That is. Uh, and how long ago did you put this This is the in? third year, this not this, this is the first, but it still looks yeah. good. And it still looks good, has, an, um, has a I give another two years, yeah. Yes, yeah. And, but, but is no there maintenance. a particular species that is at the moment showing uber dominance over the others or is it still no, yeah, the no, yeah, quite let's good? Say what we see that in the works uh, you see things coming up that you don't want mm. so like uh, willows and poplars yes uh, you have you to get take the them out, out thistles we take them out we try yeah. to keep it as good but it's very low maintenance so yeah and it's beautiful you win a lot of time um, yeah absolutely and did you have to? Was it? Did you have to take a lot of the soil away? Did it? You keep it quite uh, no, I did, poor, in, I did or you a just few stupid have... things? Uh, but I, it still works. Mm, okay. I, I, I had good to uh, hear that. You know, even people. Normally, I would have <laughs> waited for one more year and just keep everything uh, out of okay. the weeds. And just yeah, now yeah. we have some nasty weeds in it, yes. which we don't get rid of. But and you then... see, <coughs> this is uh, from the office. Beautiful. Different. Yes. This is so interesting and it's so important for us all to see this way that you don't look in. So many people look at a planting in terms of whether it's going to be good in spring, a spring mm. garden, or a, Pete does every season in one go so that your layering is... Yeah. Um, ah, where oh, that's highlight. why it, you know, we want to no. go quick. You want to uh, no, have no, more on the... On no, the it's okay. Payroll, We've got yeah. heaps more to come, I tell you. Okay, okay. Go um, ahead. Go have ahead. you been to the High Line? Are you all, um, are you all? And am I right in thinking, um, Ivan and Manuela, that you saw Pete's work from your? Have you got a gallery that overlooks the High Line? You'll see probably half of the pictures that always show in the gallery. Okay. Ah. Okay. Yes, because um, you know that's an amazing that where the High Line became became so important. So uh, what, what was your um, first involvement with the High Line? Did I they... was asked by the lead architects, so they were on the, on, the, on the short list of the competition, so by field operations, they asked me to do all the planting there. So they mm. asked me to become part of the team. Yeah. And I never heard of it. No one heard of that, of no. the High Line at that time. But I looked on the internet and uh, I saw some film of advocates, people that were really talking about how beautiful it was. and. Uh, so I thought, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm going to do Gonna this. Help yeah, them. I just uh, no, I help them. Well, help, go help and meet them. Help myself well, a little bit. Help yourself <laughs> a little bit. But it, well, it's helped New York yeah, yeah. in in a massive See, but sense. this is how people sneaked in, uh, and uh, this is Ivan. 
<laughs> Sneaking this on is the lead architect, James Corner, and uh, uh, you can imagine what that is, was a real, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, imagine being faced with how many miles? How many kilometers? Uh, one half mile, yeah. One and a half, half miles, half you kilometers. know, no wonder he's looking with that pensive face. What How are we going to do with this? Yeah, so. Yes. All excavated and uh, taken, but a great, great guy. I think I love him. I learned to know, work with him. This is his design. And I think Dilio Scofidio were the architects. And he is the, the landscape architect who did mainly all the, all the structural uh, Hardscaping in, on the High Line. Dilish Kofidi did all the architectural elements, so mm -hmm. the, the view over 10th Avenue, the elevator stairways, and so on. So this, uh, everything was taken out, and this was the state where, where it was found in, and then transformed into to this. So you see... And rather, how long did that area, do you, what sort of yeah, block areas was, do you do at a time? What lengths do you, does it go in? Oh, I just, I don't know. Do I did the year. first stage, second stage, uh, third phase, third phase. Yeah, Not this work. is one corner in You particular. see the depth. So you can see it's created on a, on a, on a roof, on roofs of many, on roofs of bridges and, and also buildings. So the depth is uh, 14 inches most. 14, Gosh, 14, nothing. even less sometimes. So this yeah. is very shallow. So spring bulb planting. Uh, this is halfway spring. This is autumn. And then uh, this is winter. So Amazing. you see, and that was the whole idea of the founders that it should remind you of what it once was, but you, you know, you couldn't re really bring it back. You really could bring back the, uh, the sort of emotion Mm. that it once had, because everything is taken out and rebuilt. You can see it, uh, a layer of soil. But and, not uh, a big layer of soil. If it's no, only... sometimes they mounted it up, but this is the design process. So you go into, uh, also my work is about layers. It's, it's, it's uh, ground covers, uh, shrubs, trees, sometimes bulbs. And the, the dots grasses in the matrix? No, let's say or? the bigger group, we call that matrix, mm -hmm. more or less. Yeah. yeah. Then we have the individual plants that, that are scattered through the matrix. A matrix is sometimes more than just one dominant species. So it's yeah. uh, uh, several groups of dominant species where individual plants cross in two. You see that yeah. little crosses, little dots. Yes. And then on top of that, there are trees. So. But you know, yeah. it's uh, so phlox stolonifera is added into the pachysandra. Yeah. So probably it the is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the is yeah. rather. And yeah. that's adiantum and, uh, and, yeah. and astrantia or something. This is mm. how I work it out. So okay, so, so that you can work it. Phase one, and then they take this and they translate. Yeah, it's intermingling. So you see, yeah. some groups are intermingling. Some, mm. some are. It's complicated. Very uh, complicated. To get, uh, if I look to at get, it, I get tired when I look at it already. Yes, so. I know. Can and, you imagine um, that uh, the contractor was... Uh, not very happy at first, but they all yeah. understand it. And yeah, this eventually. is on top of that, that's the tree that I grow on top of what you saw before. So, that so is the, that's layer, top layer. Top layer, yeah. And then going that, down, that going down to going the down ground. Going down and yeah. going down, so it is this... Yeah. Know, that gives you the complexity that takes you through the seasons. And this is what it is, yeah. So and that's sort it. Of, yeah. there it, there it is. Lovely, is that a magnolia? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's one of these big, big, big leafed uh, magnolias. Delavei type or a... Yeah, tree petala, and I oh, think uh, some people think it's a banana tree. Yeah. Mm. They well, say, it's oh, you grow bananas on the high banana. line, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it's minus 16 yeah. wind yeah, chill yeah. factor. Unlikely. Yeah. Gosh, it, it does look like banana, though. You see, this is the sort of ground cover. So mm. this, this is a very shady. So you're, you know, again, you've got so many variations in climate going on. Yeah, this is microclimate. Yeah, this yeah. is uh, a lot of ferns and ground covers. Mm -hmm. Early flowering plants like phloxes and. Uh, and drainage and issues, or drainage, just too much drainage, or this are there areas? No, everything is taken care of. Everything is taken care of. Yeah, it's beautiful. Is, Look at that. Yeah. Sort of, you know, this is a mile and a half in a public city. It's yeah. so exciting. And also plants growing over the edge. Yeah. A lot of... Uh, and lots of trees. 
uh, yeah, birch trees, but we have other trees, surface berries and, uh, and magnolia. So there's a whole range. Uh, yeah. Depends on where you are. Yeah. This is uh, sort Birches of uh, in winter. The thicket. Gorgeous. Meadow areas, very low meadows, existing out of maybe four or five uh, species, no more. So uh, bulb planting in spring. Mm. Allium, Allium nigrum, and, and, and Eremurus, Hemolaricus. And this is how it was, you know, as you can see the, house, the white house on the left hand side, and then uh, this is the same place. With the Allium. This is more or less what, what we're going to make here in spring. So you see this sort of Eremurus and the Alliums. So this sort of feeling in, in the time that the plants are not really growing yeah. uh, or Wild flowering. Air. So this is the spring, early spring uh, sort of uh, How moment. How it will be here, yeah. yeah. Then is, this is June, July, so we have this interaction of individual little groups that uh, we call seasonal aspects. Summer. You've used this a lot uh, here. They call that you? scatter, scattering, or in the yes. aisle. Mm. The so You can give it a name, intermingling, scattering. Mm. Uh, but creates a sort of spontaneity that you can't control. You can control it, but it's a different yeah. way of uh, yes. working. Yeah. yeah. So we spoke a bit about the Lurie Garden, but we can now look at. Uh, yeah, look at, I see that this is the again. Lurie Garden in the year two thousand two, I think. Yeah. Mm. That's on top of a uh, parking lot or rail yard. So this is the whole garden is on top of this. Wow. So you can see this is the design. So. Really, I worked with uh, 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 landscape architects, and I think they give me a sort of sheet and uh, say, "Okay, this is more or less the basic design. Can we? Uh, can you just act on that with your planting?" So I see it as a script. We get a definition of every area, and I, I translate that into a planting. So that is when I work with, I col collaborate with landscape architects uh, with real, really a sort of very complicated technical uh, yes. uh, hard landscaping then I just do the planting and then we I try to translate the, the uh, sort of mutual idea yeah this is and that's uh, what happens yeah. Pete's yeah. trying to tell us it's not art <laughs> yeah it's no, hard the, hard hard okay hard. we'll call it hard a hard work hard look at work, that yeah. river of salvias isn't that extraordinary in June so and then all the grasses yeah. emerge from that uh, mm. No. And Tucker, <laughs> that's, that's is a this a private project or is private, this a very complicated project on the ocean? Two hundred, you see, that's on, on right on the ocean. So ecologically, it's a very hard side to work on. Very, uh, but more, most stressful project in my life. Is this why we've got <laughs> it in here? <laughs> because I was. Uh, it's a very funny story that I was asked by the, the owners that they they had a holiday house where they, which they hired they could buy and they bought it and they said we have half an acre of land. And during the process they bought one lot after the other so it became a two and a half, uh, of, let's say four, seven, seven acres. So, and that uh, I, I didn't uh, find a way out so I asked field operations. <laughs> <laughs> If you do the master plan, I'll be there for the planting. But you see, this yeah. is the island. It's a sort of beautiful... Amazing, uh, misty. Uh, yeah. Misty, misty. sassafras, one of a very rare God, tree. Oh, look at that. Those uh, beautiful, beautiful yeah. existing sassafras. And that's uh, the trees that came in. And when we, uh, you know, it was not only perennials. Uh, people see me as someone who does perennial plantings. But that is the most exciting, most difficult part of all planting design. Mm. So trees, I think... It, for me, it's not so complicated, and uh, but I do them. But people neglect me; uh, they always think they I don't do them. They pigeonhole you. Yeah. You're pigeonholed. You see, but this is the landscape, mm -hmm. and you see it's pure sand. It's, yes. Uh, acid, pure sand, and uh, we used uh, ninety-five percent native plants. And uh, and the good thing is, America has such beautiful native plants that I, yeah. I don't mind. You know, we can. <laughs> there's so much choice. Yes. That I don't want to go out of. Uh, that and range, you've yeah. been and seen a lot in the wild with a lot of yeah, I travel a, I travel you, a lot. That's but, uh, the, you see, this is the sort of this planting. This is the multi-layering of the tracing paper. This is all the plants. We did a trial for one year with all the plants, if they, uh, how they would react and work. And, and this is uh, sort of the landscape we created there. It's, uh, Looks like a 
dream. In fact, it looks as though it's a projected image that an architect would give somebody as a sort of, you know. Yeah. And yet uh, there it is. And then I, I don't know how it worked out, but I was asked by architects, suddenly I moved into another direction by architects suddenly discovered my sort of uh, what I was doing. Normally uh, architects never wanted a green in, around the buildings because then they, people wouldn't see their building. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, the time, uh, you know, all these ecological aspects that people uh, want to um, be involved in, that they say we do good for the environment, then suddenly the architect discovered green for, to, to just uh, dress their buildings. And I was, uh, uh, maybe it's too, too, too much. Yeah, it's, no, no, it's not. Uh, it's true. In, in, uh, time has changed, so green yeah. became more important. And uh, I was asked by Sana Architect, uh, the Japanese mm -hmm. architects for the Biennale, and the, the, the theme was people meet in architecture. So it was not about architecture, it was about art, architecture, and people uh, that were connected to the architect. And I could do a garden at the Arsenal at that time. Mm -hmm. And I made that uh, so work, and I became very well known, very, very sort yeah. of uh, well, well, successful, I don't want to see, it was hidden. Yes. But that was another aspect of architecture at that time. And also it's very interesting through your work and the public spaces you've done and how many architects do now want to work with you. It has changed, it's changed the whole scene of, of how it's been very important in the greening of cities and you know, it's been Probably, incredibly yeah, influential. Yeah. Um, I'd say in planning sense, actually, it's been a yeah, marked a big yeah. change of, of thing. With Presumably, though, you how long did you have to set up for a Biennale installation? Few months, few Just months, a few yeah. months. So this had and to be something that it was for one one season. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So things rather like the serpentine, which we may. Yeah, see the in fact a is moment. that once it is there, people want to keep it. So yes. then, then I have a problem because I create a garden for one season with all, <laughs> all rampant plants, plants that grow wild and yeah. fast. And they say, oh, can we keep it for next year? I say, yeah, then we re have to redo it. There's no budget, they say. So, uh, <laughs> and is this uh, that? This is to be an as well, yeah. And so is it's this a, some, it's a one of with, Nori's dahlias? Is this yeah, the in, Nori in a, dahlia? In, in, a, in a wild meadow. Yes. So it was nice, a nice sort of contrast. of And a lovely link with friendship mm -hmm. and all the different friends breeding. I remember when Nori was breeding that dahlia. Yeah. So this was the garden at that time, so uh, it mm. maybe still there, but uh, I, can, I know that uh, David Chipperfield asked me to do, redo the garden, if, if I could continue the garden, and then I said, yeah, in fact, the garden is over date, so it's like milk, you know, after a few years, uh, a few, uh, if yeah, it's, it's over gone date, off. you don't want to drink it anymore. I didn't want to, to see the garden anymore. And I just uh, said, okay, we, I have a good concept, you know, we, we, what we do, we let it go, we let it go wild, and we tell people this is what, uh, you know, this is uh, yeah. pro, um, succession, yeah? Yeah. and that, that's what we put on a, on a shield. Pro, yeah? And then I don't have to do anything, you have a garden. <laughs> and there'll probably be a lot of Eupatorium now. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> but they didn't accept that, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, no, that was this too is the first conceptual. Yeah, yeah conceptual. They wanted yeah. art, but they didn't want it to be conceptual. Yeah. So this is uh, this is this is part of it. Yeah. So I used yeah. a lot of annuals because yes. the, uh, I could do that for one year. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, the hot, and then the serpentine. I, I, I know that I was interviewed by Hans Ulrich Obrist, mm -hmm. and and they they he. Uh, when they were doing this new uh, pavilion from Peter Sumter, uh, he advised Peter Sumter to take me as for, for their, he, he wanted to do a Hortus conclusion. He asked me, if I advised me, uh, he recommended me, and uh, so we came to a collaboration. And I could do the interior of this pavilion, which was a garden also for one season. Yeah. I was lucky that they had to take it down Otherwise, people would have kept it. As you see, it was quite a success, and you see the plants are stowed in. Uh, how do you say so many? Yes. But uh, in a very, uh, in a good, in the right way. But uh, yeah. no, it was wonderful, wondrous place yeah. to go and have a cup of coffee. I can tell you, this is easier than a garden here in the back. Yes, yeah. because it's there for one. You know, it's yeah. a. Yeah, you it's just a take it out and say, okay, this. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like a, it's, it's, it's yeah. an installation. So. Yes. But with many of the ingredients that you will find here, but just in yeah, a different... Yeah, then I was, um, after that, was asked by, to do this show for, for Chanel, and I thought, okay. 
going into fashion. Oh, and doing it in, uh, what's that pattern called? Camouflage. <laughs> Chanel no, this camouflage, is, uh, neon you see, camouflage. But you see, this is another way, so you can see that, that also through this sort of series of slides, you can see that uh, every project has another demand, has another working process. At the end, it's all uh, sort of, yes. at the end, it comes to the same matter. It's about plants and beauty. Uh, but it is different, and I uh, see, see we're planting here. Uh, very complex little planting, had to perform at the 5th of May. Now there's no garden in the world Ooh. except tropical gardens that can very work tricky. at that time. Yeah. And we had so many night frosts that year that uh, 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 <gasps> Louise have seen me several times and say, oh, Louise, our plants are just... Are you involved in this project no, as well? No. No, no, no. So this was uh, the 5th of May. So we yeah. had all these people from Chanel coming 14 days before. What will this ever be? And, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, and they say, but they trusted me very well. So yeah. that, uh, so, and, uh, and then after that we had, uh, I can tell you again, we came back in the summer. The maintenance was so bad <laughs> that I never went back. Really? Oh I said, dear. And they, they asked me this, some, uh, this spring to come over. They wanted to hand it over to the, to the uh, uh, whatever, uh, Palais de Tokyo. I said, I don't come back. Yeah. I said, yeah. I know, you, I've seen it last year. You want to, and I, it was so bad. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to see it anymore. Yes. Yeah, so well, that's, uh, that's... You're warned. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why I say, that's why I say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it, it's, uh, I think there's a big difference between art and fashion, huh? Yes. Art very... stays and fashion goes. Yes. And on that note, we've come to the end. So, yeah. Pete, thank you so much for talking to us all here this afternoon. Thank you.